Hello everybody, my name is Katerina Nastasopoulou and I am a sport journalist and TV host for the Greek National Television, which is ERT of course, specializing in documentary storytelling. I will be the moderator on the next subject, with, which is sports tourism and tennis. And uh, at this point, I would like uh, to welcome on stage two very important speakers, Mr. Spiros Anyas, Vice President of the International Olympic Academy, International Tennis Federation member and Honorary Consul of Kazakhstan Republic in Greece. And of course, Mr. Adonis Kalainzakis, founder of Ace Tennis Academy and tournament dire director of ITF, ITF World Tennis Tour. I want to thank you both for being here and speak on the same subject for about 10 to 15 minutes. And um, please keep in mind that we will have a short discussion after your speech with uh, some questions coming from the audience. We can start right away. Mr. Zanyas, the stage is yours. Thank you, Katerina. So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to warmly thank the organizing committee for the invitation and the opportunity offered to me to be right here among you. It is a unique opportunity to share my experiences and points of view with a very special audience oriented to a significant topic, that of sport combined with tourism. I have been involved with the development of tennis and sport in general at local and uh, international level for 37 years through various positions in the International Olympic family. But now I must uh, uh, put some questions to you. How can be the combination of uh, sport and tourism and to, be, and to be successful? Are there any spe specific parameters and conditions to meet? The answer is surely yes. Sport events must run away from violence, manipulation for profit, doping from a number of challenges. They must be staged by people who are able to cooperate smoothly and comply with the regulations. The regulations set by the national and the international bodies, federations. The courts themselves must be technically correct and all the other necessary facilities uh, must be also uh, in the level and the size depending fr fr from the organization that we are going to organize. If infrastru infrastructure is not good, competitions do not attract athletes to, complete, to compete. Moreover, let me add, medical coverage, doctors in the field of play, hospitals close to the, to the, to the venue, etc., accommodation, boarding, transportation, recreation. Each of the above mentioned parameters is classified according to competition level, local, national, international level, till Olympic Games. It is quite obvious that the local and regional government, the Ministry for Culture and Sport, the Ministry of Tourism, sport federations, the National Olympic Committee must be in constant cooperation. Otherwise, the success of the event will not be, the result will not be in the level that we desire. There is still uh, some people are still discussing against the Olympic Games in Athens. Let me take a minute to refer to the Olympic Games of 2004. I was in the board of directors in the 17 persons uh, representing four of us, uh, representing the Hellenic Olympic Committee. There is still quite some winning about these financial consequences. There is still some talk about an economic flop. This is quite far from reality. Infra infrastructure as the extension of metro lines, 
the Superman train, Attiki Odos, the Fali Bridge, and other uh, facilities that we cannot see, uh, like uh, all this that we still ex exist in Athens, cameras, etc. So, this kind of legacy we should not be taken into account. They have been a real investment for sport tourism. Our incapacity, this is the truth, to make the most out of it is another issue, which leads to an unproductive and uh, uh, specular without sense. With regard to tennis, I will talk about the time period between 1995 and 2022. Why? in this period because the Federation was uh, established in 1938. So from 1938 to 1997, I have the experience to talk, but from 1997 I am personally there, physically there, so I have a good uh, opinion, concrete opinion to talk. It is 27 year period I have been personally and actively involved with tennis and I thus have quite a clear picture of it. Back then, there were 110 tennis clubs, while today are more than 400. 1995, the number of registered athletes was 10,515, while today is 47,940. 1997, there were four national competitions, two in Athens, one in Thessaloniki, one in the wider regions of the country, and an international one. Back then, only six sports facilities could host competitions. Athena, Thessaloniki, Philothei, Heraklion, Ceres, and Glyphada. The actual number of people registered and non-registered ones playing tennis now are 170,000. Competitions are held throughout the country, from Hania to Orestiada, and from Castellorizo to Corfu. They annually produce 65,000 men days. As a result, with 100 euros for accommodation, boarding, transportation, medical supplies, etc., recreation, we have 6,500,000 euros allocated to the national economy. If we add the transportation expenses to and from the place of competition by air, car, or boat, we have more than 8 million euros. That is an, a huge profit, totally 14,500,000 euros. For the above mentioned events, the Hellenic Tennis Federation received the amount of 350,000 euros for the year 2021, while the respective amount for two 2022 is yet to be defined, not yet announced. So it means that the 14,500,000 direct profit had an expense for the Greek citizens of 350,000 euros. Besides numbers and direct profit, let me also mention the indirect profit and benefits for the athletes taking part in, competi in competitions. From 1997 to today, uh, five today, we have <coughs> a big participation of athletes from all 210 countries in the world, which are members of the International Federation through their uh, national federations. They are coming to play here. We are talking about more than 20,000 athletes aged between 12 and 35 years. All of them are ambassadors of Greek tradition, tourism, hospitality, and as you know, as we know all, when a child, me too, I was in Corfu when I, I, I was 12, I want to go again, to visit again, so it's a big circle in profit of the uh, tourism. <clears throat> Some of them are Olympic medalists and very high in the ATP rankings. And now I'll give you an example. For instance, Roger Federer, 
lost a match competition in Kalamata when he was 18 years old. He passed from Kalamata. And from then, he passed again. Also, you see Djokovic circulating around and some other players that are coming in Greece. And one of the reasons that they are coming is all these uh, acts from the Federation creating a world tennis destination for Greece. Four years ago, I put forward the proposal of staging an ATP 250 professional championship at the Panathenaic Stadium. That is actually a feasible target with two temporary tennis courts with the Panathenaic Stadium for the competitions. While Athens Tennis Club, close to Panathenaic Stadium, nearby can provide courts of training. This way, the whole area covering the front of the Acropolis, the Temple of the Olympian Zeus, the Panathenaic Stadium and Zapion Megaron can be brought into the limelight and thus attract a lot of attention and interest for all Athens and Greece. This will be a landmark event in the history of tennis and a unique opportunity for Athens. I believe that for such, uh, for a, such a, uh, an event, it is not even necessary to conduct the cost-benefit analysis. It might be the only profitable ATP 2050 event, because I must tell you that we have categories of uh, professional tournaments. Uh, ATP means Association Tennis Professional, Professional Association for Men, and WTA means uh, Women Tennis Association for the Women. And so we have levels. The 250 level for men uh, means 250 points. The 500, 500 points. 1,009 we have in all the world. After we have uh, Grand Slams and the Olympic Games. The cost is not 250. The prize money only will be 700,000 approximately. Uh, concluding my speech, I would like to add that all this creates a market also around tennis. And I, I'll give you a figure. And now tennis is approximately the 3% of the sport industry market in Greece. And uh, plus of it, all these activities are creating, uh, are giving work to many, many people. We calculate with this increase that we have, approximately 3,000 people are, people are working. So we have, uh, we, we are against unemployment and we help also the national economy uh, from this point of view. And uh, now, because it's not possible to see everything here in this map, tournaments, international tournaments, we organize Ceres, Kufalia, Kilkis, Aridea, Ptolemaida, Preveza, Ioannina, Corfu, Athens, Attiki, Patras, Heraklion, Kalimnos, Mytilen, Rhodes, Corinthos, Kalamata, Arta, Thessaloniki, Philippiada. And this year, we will add more, so we will depass uh, in international tournaments distribution in Greece, the 80, 80 tournaments in uh, 35 to 37 weeks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, presenta presentation. Uh, I have a question. Um, the, COVID, the COVID pandemic has caused a lot of problems in, uh, in sport in the last years. How did the Hellenic Tennis Federation react to this? About pandemic? Yes. Uh, we had in uh, last weekend, we had the annual general meeting of, the, of Tennis Europe. And uh, there is a card, I believe it's in the presentation, Showing that we were That's why the, I only, asked. the only one federation, national federation in Europe, increasing numbers. Can we have this card, please? I'm not sure if we can. If the only one was yes. published in the report of uh, the president Ivo Kaderka and uh, the uh, CEO, Mr. Thomas Hammer. And you will see now. Yes. Here. This is the in club members, licensed players, federation members, and coaches. 
You made also a proposal four years ago, which was uh, impressive, about hosting a tournament, ATP 250, uh, in the Panathinaik uh, Stadium. And uh, you mentioned the cost-benefit comparison, emphasizing on the, on the profitability of the tournament. Can you explain that furthermore? This was out uh, uh, first time on the air with the ex-minister of sports, Mr. Vasiliadis. And uh, from then, as a member of uh, the Olympic Committee and uh, vice president of the International Olympic Academy, we had advanced discussions with the president, Mr. Capralos, and uh, the executive committee of uh, the Hellenic uh, and, and other members. So it's uh, now ready. Uh, it's from up from uh, because, as you know, Panathinaik Stadium belongs to Hellenic Olympic Committee. Yes. I don't know if you know that. I do. And it's necessary to, uh, for the Hellenic Olympic Committee to agree to do this tournament. Now we must find the week. The money, I believe, is so attractive, this event, that we will find. The cost will be approximately more than 1.7 million. As I was referred in my speech, uh, the prize money only will be 750,000. And uh, from uh, the economic uh, view, it's okay. Uh, also tickets, we have 48,000 spectators, unique event in all the world for tennis. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, we are close, very close, to, to organize it uh, in Panathinaik Stadium. But Antonis Kalajdzic is a big champion uh, in the past and now a man of tourism due to the fact that he's cooperating with Hellenic uh, Zeps, one of the biggest uh, industries uh, in Greece for tourism. So he will explain you also some other things that we do all together. Okay, that was <laughs> the best hint. Let's have, uh, let's move on with the second presentation. Mr. Kalajakis. Mr. Zanyas, thank you for your kind words. Uh, first, I would like to thank also the organizing committee for inviting me. It's an honor and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm here, I would like to present a tennis event uh, that from being a very good idea became a leading project for a hotel to discover the world of tennis in, uh, in tourism. In 2012, we had a, a dream to transmit uh, our tennis expertise into the world of tourism. The way that this could be done was by organizing ITF World Tennis Tournaments in a resort with the demanding facilities. Although it might sound easy, it was a task that needed a combination of experts for the event to have a successful future. So, three different fields were combined. Government bodies, hotel industry, and tennis experts. Our team found immediately the support needed from the beginning in the face of Mr. Zanyas, president of the Hellenic Tennis Federation, Mr. Sapunakis, the owner of the resort Litos Beach, and of course, our team of experts on the field of tennis. The blending of the three was the key to success. As an ex-professional tennis player, the identification of the level of the venue and the facilities of the hotel was Im immediately acknowledged. And therefore, all the needs of the tournament were met on a higher level than expected. Immediately, my team knew that, sorry, knew what was of high importance for players, coaches, and all the people involved in the event. This gave a very good performance profile for the event, which over the years became even better. Great academies such as Muratoglu Academy, Nadal Tennis Academy, man managed to find a product that was meeting their needs for their athletes. The accommodation value level was of high standard, and in addition to the Greek hospitality, it started to make the project noticeable around the world. By that time, the ITF had spotted our series of tournaments as one of the most successful around the world, and the reason was that that tennis project, and not any tennis project, but a series of ITF World Tennis Tournament, was inserted in an area of business, the hotel industry, that wasn't easy to understand the needs for such an event. As you can imagine, the needs for a tennis tournament and the needs for a hotel to function are totally different. 
Therefore, we were invited by the ITF in 2008 to present the way that our team was functioning in order to achieve that great result. And this was presented to all the similar projects running around the world. Some of them are Egypt, Turkey, Tunisia, and Mexico. All of this made us realize that this could create a new product on the hotel's revenue. We started to provide more and more weeks in the off-season period, a thing that was very important as the hotel could not attract these numbers from any other tour operator and only from the tournaments in the time of the year that the tournaments were held. Parallel to that, the hotel's name was starting to be famous in the tennis world for its amazing level of facilities, level of organizing such events, and of course, facts that our country can provide, such as weather, hospitality, and environment. These facts added together had a huge impact on the increase of revenue for the new product that came out of these tournaments. The hotel had entered successfully the world of sport tourism with tennis. To this time, the hotel attracted many tennis groups before and after the tournaments, and we increased the level of events that could be held in the venue with the highlight of last year's Davis Cup tie between Greece and Lithuania, an event that welcomed top ATP, ATP players such as Tsitsipas Barankis and again was organized with great success. With great results on a performance base, but also on the revenue charts, the hotel had a strong will to search other sports and try to do the same to increase the events held by the venue. So, after this uh, short speech, we can uh, have some, uh, a look on some facts from the tournament. So we had a project. The project uh, was in Litos Beach under the auspices of the International Tennis Federation, the Hellenic Tennis Federation. And uh, what was organized? It was a, an international professional tennis tournament with women and men, a thing very important as combined event uh, can create more uh, overnights for the hotel so it could make uh, the, the, the project more uh, sustainable. The, the prize money was 30,000 per week dollars, and uh, this means 15,000 uh, per gender every week. Development, on the development side, uh, we needed immediately to act, and we had the help of the hotel. Throughout the years the, the tournaments were held, the hotel started to invest in the area of sports facilities. The result was giving the venue a different level of approach from both tennis players and tennis tourists. A fact that meant that every year more and more people would trust the hotel, would trust our event, and they would come back. Parallel to that, as I mentioned, tennis tourists will repeatedly come back and have a holiday, which means that tennis tourists would be again in the venue. We come to today where the venue has increased, obviously, uh, the facilities, but not only tennis courts. We have 21 tennis courts, three paddle courts, two football, football pitches, a basketball court, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and a bicycle center. This means that the hotel, uh, as, as mentioned before, uh, tried to find new projects that could attract, again, more and more people to come and accommodate themselves in the venue. Of course, to be, to be able to provide and be successful, we needed uh, outside of the court also good facilities. This was found mainly uh, starting with the clubhouse, a level that could uh, give the athletes and their teams the feeling of relaxation at a high level, which is highly important for the athletes. Outcourt services world-class fitness facilities, indoor swimming pool, physiotherapy, medical center, things that are very important for athletes competing at a high level. So basically, we had to provide a full package for the athletes to be able to compete and be present at our tournament and present in the hotel. Now, some stats. The tournaments attract a large number of participating players from around the world and is one of the most important tennis events in Greece since 2012 and one of the best organized in the world. The entries for each men's tournament is around 90 athletes and for each women's tournament also 70 athletes. This should be added 
In, to this, we should add the companions of each athlete, coaches, gymnasts, physiotherapists, relatives, as well as tennis friends from all over Greece and the world who are in Crete on the days of tournaments. It is considered that the level of competition is very high with the leading international athletes of our country and Cyprus as well, as with athletes from around the world who are in the top position of the world rankings. This helped also many national players to play with, within the country tournaments that would show them their potential to fulfill their dream on the pro circuit. During the five weeks, we can mention that approximately we could attract 400 athletes, 80 coaches and 40 companions, numbers that obviously add up for the hotel. Now, on the sports uh, stats, some very important names began their career in these tournaments. We start with Maria Sakkari on the number three at the moment on the WTA rankings. Stefanos Tsitsipas, number five, Arina Zabalenka, Matteo Berrettini, Yannick Sina, Ugo Umber, Karolina Muchova, Michaela Buzarnescu. These big players at this time started their career in Litos Beach under our tournaments. Some pictures of our Greek champions before they become top stars as they are now. Now, some numbers about the tournaments throughout the years of 2012 until today. We have a total of 185 weeks of tournaments that have been organized, a total of 2.265, 2 million and 265 uh, US dollars in cash price money have been distributed to athletes and together with the operating cost of the tournaments, the total amount comes up to $3 million. Uh, this sounds a huge number, but if we think that the, over the 185 weeks, we are creating around 200,000 overnights for the hotel, which can add up to a revenue of 13 to 15 million over the years. I would like to thank you for your attention and hopefully we can answer questions that uh, you have. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was very detailed, but uh, we want to highlight one aspect more. Um, one question, so. Yes. Um, how important and influential is or could be volunteering in these tournaments? It, it, it's very important. One of the most important aspects is to have a team volunteering and knowing what to do, having uh, the, 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 the idea of what is needed for these tournaments. And this is where our success came, because the, the team that we had was exactly what we needed, and they needed a, gr a great guideline for the tournaments. We gave it to them, and the result was good. And one more question from the audience. Um, so, uh, recently the Ace Tennis Club hosted a tennis match of the Greek men team for the Davis Cup. Do you believe that this was the start and Greece will eventually host bigger scale tennis tournaments? I wouldn't say it's the start, but it's a good sign of what Greece can do. We have the, the infrastructure to do it. I think the good people are in the correct positions to guide everyone to create a good result for the tennis uh, industry in Greece. How much uh, can we wait in order to see a big tournament in Greece? And I'm addressing this question to both of you. Uh, I, Why I did explain, this proposal stay on paper? I will explain the difficulties. Uh, this kind of tournaments is like an apartment. Or you rent or you buy. So we have a number, a concrete number, uh, every year, except the period of uh, pandemic. So uh, we must rent or we must buy a tournament. To buy is too expensive. So it's uh, absolutely necessary to, to rent, only to rent. Second, you must find the week. It depends from uh, the Grand Slams, all good players, they want to play in the same surface uh, as they are going to play after in uh, Roland Garros or in Wimbledon, USA Open or Australian Open. Uh, third difficulty, we must uh, have a contract with Stefanos Tsitsipas and uh, the other Greek uh, 
Champions, especially with Stefanos. Third, for me, this is not a difficulty, but uh, I refer because to this. Because he attracts many people and uh, the sponsors also. Yeah. Yes, so it's something that must be discussed with the family and especially with Stefanos now. Uh, fourth difficulty is uh, to find the correct week and, uh, at, and at, at the end I must say that uh, when we are in Europe, the indoor uh, tournaments are in hard court, all of them. Here in Greece, we don't have such a place to organize. If we go to stadium, uh, Friendship Stadium, or uh, uh, the Olympic Stadium basket, uh, and the, the only facility, and it's strange, that can accept uh, such a tournament, is the facility of uh, Heraklion in Crete. Uh, two Aorakia is the name of uh, the stadium, and they have except the uh, main hall, they have also two uh, other uh, halls in correct dimensions, so we can organize there with 5,500 people. And uh, when we are in outdoor, we are on clay courts, and as I explained to you before, we must be in accordance with the surfaces of the Grand Slams and the big tournaments that the players are going to play after. That's why we proposed a unique place to organize like Panathenaic Stadium, due to the fact that ATP perhaps must accept exceptionally to organize such a tournament in this uh, unique monument. Which is the oldest uh, operating stadium in the world, yes. I must say. Uh, yes. One more question for the, uh, from the audience. With tennis becoming increasingly popular during the pandemic, do you believe that there is an opportunity for further development of the sport, or do you believe that the sport has reached its peak in Greece? Mr. Kalantzakis, perhaps. I think that uh, a sport um, never has a, a limit, sky is the limit, but uh, obviously, pandemic created some situations that, that were firstly appeared in uh, our lives. So these numbers uh, obviously were very good and uh, they, they showed the potential that we have in the tennis industry and how tennis is likable in the Greek community. Uh, yes, of course, uh, it could mean that uh, these numbers could not go any higher. But I think that it's a positive sign and uh, I, I have to mention that I've forgotten on my presentation also to say that because we said something about the pandemic, the tournaments that we are running, they were the only sports event that kept running. So it shows how strong tennis is and how it can keep going. Can I add something on this? Yes, of course. Uh, before we have seen here the numbers of uh, 2021 and us uh, an observation I must uh, repeat again, the numbers are higher. Why that? Because we kept open the sport. The only sport that was opened from the beginning of pandemic was tennis. And uh, this was unique. It's not a favor that the government did to us. It's a sport that we play without uh, touching one or the other. Uh, in, a, in a field of six, <laughs> 658 square meters. Yeah. And we took all the measures, and I must tell you that the only country in Europe that we started first from everybody. So, one more question. Do you believe that the success of Tsitsipas and Sakari has created a new generation of tennis players, and how can we capitalize this dynamic in order to develop the sport? Let me explain you Even one more. thing. I, perhaps it will not uh, be a good sound for our students and uh, all the participants. Tennis is a sport that will exist ever. 1938 to now and uh, one of the uh, founders of the sports in Greece when tennis was together with uh, athletics and some other federations and they created SEGAS. And from there, this mother gave uh, to all the possibilities 
to be alone as we did 1938. So tennis will exist with and without Tsitsipas and Sakari. But this momentum for the Hellenic Tennis Federation, let's say, let me say for sports in Greece, having Tsitsipas and Sakari is also unique. It is unique. And it helps not only tennis, helps all uh, kids that they want to, uh, to come with their families uh, in sport in Greece. So yes, Tsitsipas and Sakari are, cre are creating a unique momentum for the development, more development of tennis. And but the numbers that you have, uh, we gave before, shows that tennis now is everywhere in Greece. Even in the most, you have seen tournaments in Aridea, Kilkis, Kufalia. Kufalia is a municipality in the northern, uh, northeast block of Thessaloniki, for example. Another around a GNC, etc. Uh, I believe that I believe that this pyramid, with a bigger base, gives more opportunities. And we see now, except uh, Stefanos and uh, Maria, lucky. Uh, we see uh, Mitsakos, we see Astrinidis, uh, we see Papa Mikhail, uh, Grammaticopoulou. In uh, women and men, we have a very good team. And this time we won in A's without, without Stefanos. So we have seven more minutes. This I don't know if you would like to make a comment um, over the latest uh, statement of Tsitsipas, who called for women to step up to play five set matches to earn the same prize money as men. And uh, I'm not sure that uh, he tried to extend women's game or limit the men's game to three sets. Me personally, because Antonis yes. will answer also, I believe. <gasps> I believe that uh, we cannot, I, I cannot comment Artists. So, Tsitsipas is an artist. He's an artist. What about you, Mr. Kalajakis? I have to say that, as uh, Mr. Zanias mentioned before, tennis has a history. I think we, and I say we, not as a player, but as part of the tennis <laughs> environment, and the players and everyone who is involved in the worldwide tennis community, we are part of that history with what we create. We cannot change it. Um, I, I don't know if he wanted to play three sets maybe in the future, which is maybe clever of him, but uh, yeah, I think uh, women Because he argued there would be more male winners in three set matches. Yes. And uh, there were also, you know, some reactions from uh, Naomi Osaka. Um, she, she called him a funny guy, a man talking about women's sport. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And uh, stuff like that. <laughs> I, I don't know, since we have uh, six more minutes, if you want to add something uh, according the presentation, the questions uh, of the... Um, I would like to, to add yes. uh, something for people watching, uh, mainly for the students, uh, with something that I started with. Uh, in this uh, industry, sports, tourism, and specific in tennis, if you have an idea, if you have a good uh, base, good foundation, you can create uh, great results. Sports in business, in, in tourism, could create amazing things. And uh, for anyone who has an idea, he should follow it and uh, he should present it to the correct people. I have one more question, which is related also to the things that you were saying uh, right now. Uh, are there any other resorts like Lito in Greece? That's is it worthy was, financially for add, resorts to put money into sports industry? I wanted to add this, uh, yes. Katerina. Now in Heraklion, close to Litos, there is the Hotel Nana, Golden Nana Beach yes. Hotel. Now they are creating 18 courts under construction. They are finishing, I believe, next week. With Litos, we will have 40, 40 courts in a five minute uh, distance. So we can organize more biggest events for seniors to have there perhaps 2,000 athletes in one week or European senior to have 1,000 athletes for one week. But plus of them, Costa Navarino, 12 courts. Uh, in Thessaloniki, Le Raquette, uh, the businessman Simos Calpinis, they create a very beautiful club there. So there is, ex except the increase of clubs, also we have from the private sector investments, big investments in tennis, 
and I believe in the future we will have more and more that will help also the sport. Uh, did you watch the uh, the Oscars? <laughs> did you watch also the, you know the movie about Serena and Venus Williams? Yeah. Do you have a comment over this because? Uh, it was a, okay, a global uh, footprint, you know? Yeah, I think a movie is always <laughs> a movie. In the world. <laughs> a movie is always a movie, but yes. uh, I think uh, it shows how tough things are out there uh, in the sport, if you want to succeed. And uh, obviously even tougher when uh, your father is uh, your coach, when your sister is, uh, you're, you're competing with your sister. Uh, I think it's a great movie, uh, inspirational for people to watch. And uh, yeah, uh, great, great uh, movie. So there are more topics and discussions uh, uh, are on the on the way. I want to thank you both for being here and uh, analyze uh, sports, um, uh, sports tourism and tennis. We you thank you personally and the yes. organizers for this invitation. Thank you so much. You have many interesting people to watch, so stay tuned. Thank you very much.